Hey guys, welcome to another lecture from Ego Point. What I will be discussing today is regarding probability and a specific part to it. We are starting our journey in order to calculate probability under various circumstances. So I'm going to start off the concept of determining probabilities systematically. Previously, we have already worked on the concept building regarding probability. We know what probability is. Probability is associated to relative frequency. It is associated to chance. Okay. In order to understand the concept of determining probabilities, let me start off with an example. During off-peak hours, a train, a commuter train, has five cars. Suppose a commuter is twice as likely to select the middle car. So, you have five cars. So, one, two, three, four, five. These are the five cars in sequence. So, the middle car turns out to be the third one. This person is twice as likely to select the middle car as to select either adjacent cars. Adjacent cars would be two, four. And is twice as likely to select either of the adjacent cars as to select either end cars. End cars are 1 and 5. What does this basically mean? So, this person has twice probability uh, of selecting 3, number 3 in comparison to 2, 4. And of 2, 4, selecting 2, 4 in comparison to 1, 5. That's what is provided to us. We need to find the probability that one of the three middle cards is selected. One of the three middle cards. Three middle cards would be 2, 3, 4. So, we need to find the probability that second or third or fourth is selected. One of them is selected. How to go about it? Well, we are not given exact probabilities. Note that clearly here. We don't have the numbers associated to probabilities, right? So, first of all, in order to derive probabilities, I'll have to make some assumptions here. Assumption in terms of how do I write it out? So, I will say that let PI denote the probability that car I is selected. I don't know what this number is, okay? But I do understand that there are certain relations provided to me. With this notation, I do at least know that P1, if I'm writing P1, it would mean that the first card is selected. P2 would denote second card. P3, third card selected. P4, fourth card selected. P5, fifth card selected, right? We are interested in P2, P3, P4. We don't have exact numbers, but what we have is we have relation. Now, this is like saying, now I'm going to relate it to the way we have understood probability till now. So, PI is basically probability of event I, where event I is denoting the event of selecting ith car. Okay. So, that's how you can relate this to events. Now, what is given to us according to the question? According to the question, we are given that P3 is equal to, it's twice as likely as P2 and it is twice as likely as P4, right? So, this is provided to us. Apart from that, what is provided to us? It's provided to us that Second one, the adjacent one is second one and the fourth one, right? The probability twice is likely, it is twice is likely to select either of the adjacent to select either end cars. So this would mean that P2 is twice as likely to be selected in comparison to P1. And also it is twice as likely to be selected in comparison to P5. That is the fifth car. In term, think in terms of car. And P2, the, this, this is the same relation also holding true for the fourth car. So, this all is equal to P4, right? So, P2 is twice P1. If that's also equal to twice P5 and that is equal to also P4. Now, this gives us something. 
This gives us that the total P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4 plus P5 is equal to, if you observe, it is equal to, if I make the right substitutions here, I can say that this is equal to P1 plus P2 is twice of P1, right? Plus P3 is twice of P2. Plus P4, I can write it down as twice of P1. Plus P5. P5 would be taken up as... Now try to look for the expressions that can simplify this scenario. I can clearly see that if I keep everything in terms of P1, it would be quite simplified. So how can I do that? I can do that by substituting P2 in terms of P1 and substituting P5 also in terms of P1. So from here, what do I know? I know that P1 plus twice P1 plus twice P2, twice P2 would be 2 into I know that P2 is twice P1, so twice P1 plus twice P1 as it is plus P5. I can take P5 in relation out here. So P5 is equal to P2 upon 2 and that means it is equal to 2P1 upon 2. That means it's just P1, right? So what we can say is that P5 is basically equal to P1. One And this, my friends, will give you the sum as 10P1. Try to understand one basic thing out here. There are five cars to this train, right? So when we are talking about this question, we are talking about selecting one car for the commuter, right? There are only five cars. The probabilities could be attached only to these five cars. There's nothing else in this experiment. The events associated to these experiments are associated to uh, car 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which means that if you add up all the probabilities, there is no sixth car to get on to. Okay? So if you add up all these probabilities associated to all the five cars, it should give you 100% in total, right? So therefore, this 10P should be, 10P1 should be equal to 1. 1 is the total probability. We have done that, the total prob concept of total probability. So the total probability should be equal to 1, which means P1 should be equal to 0.1. 1 upon 10, that is 0.1. What are we interested in? The required probability is the probability that this person takes a second car, the person takes a third car, the person takes a fourth car. There cannot be any intersections, right? If you're in the first, second car, then you can't be in the third and so on. So therefore, the probability that this person takes either second, third or fourth is just the sum of the probabilities here. So the sum of the probabilities P2 plus P3 plus P4. Now you can get the value once you have P1, which is 0.1. You can easily get what is going to be point uh, P2. P2 is twice P1, that is point. P3 is 4P1, so it's going to be 0.4. And P4 is twice P1 again, 0.2, that is 0.8. So there's an 80% chance this could be translated as 80%. How? I'm just trying to tell you very, very basic things out here. 0.8 means 8 by 10. If you want to take percentage, you will multiply by 100. So in terms of percentage, you can say that there is an 80%. 80% chance that this person will be taking up either second, third or fourth. With this example, we have been able to describe a phenomenon 
in probability the phenomena of total probability so consider a sample space that is either finite or countably infinite now countably infinite is a very important word in mathematics okay countably infinite basically means that it is an infinite case like natural numbers but you're able to count like the natural numbers you are able to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 natural numbers are associated to the concept of counting but that set is an infinite set right so countably infinite set is a set which has a one to one correspondence to the set of natural numbers basically it means that it the set is infinite fine but i'm able to count one i can say first element second element third element fourth element so on and so forth so suppose you have evens even e2 e3 e4 you are able to say that it's even first even second third fourth you don't know whether it's ending or it's not ending it might just end up somewhere at say 100 it might not end up anywhere you know it keeps on going on and on and on fine but these are simple events. If they are simple events, no compound events. Okay, simple events. We've already learned what simple events are. Only one thing is happening. Okay, there's no intersection. Nothing of that sort is happening. Then the probability of event one, event two, probability even two, probability even three, so on and so forth. When you add them up, so summation e i over all the i's that should be equal to one because that is what is your total probability and with the help of this equal to one you will be able to calculate a lot many other probabilities from the same experiment and that's what is very important for you to understand and the similar kind of explanations could be given when you have compound also you can take help of this phenomena for the compound as well but with this example since i had taken simple you know events in this example i wanted to discuss this phenomena with you guys I hope with this example, you must have gained some clarity in terms of how to use this concept of total probability. That is the total probability of all the events if you combine should be equal to one in these kind of scenarios. Thank you very much.